This life is an adventure. Christianity is an adventure. If you're not living in an adventure, as far as living in Christianity, you're not really doing what you're supposed to do. We're supposed to be out here fishing. Our lives are supposed to be in danger. We're supposed to be doing things that we never imagined. If we have a task in our hands that we, we just, I don't even need God, I can complete this task by myself, that's not an adventure. That, that's not a God thing. You got to find yourself in a place where you can say, man, if I don't have God, I'm not going to make it. If I don't have God, I'm not going to be able to do this. That's an adventure. That's what this Christian life is. It's not sitting home or sitting in a pew and watching a preacher talk about a message, hearing two fast songs, two slow songs, and then one slow at the end so that everybody can get saved and they go out and drink and, and eat and be merry. This life is an adventure. It's fun. It's hard, it's tough, I'm not gonna lie to you. The fence, <laughs> jump over, it's fun. My name is Chino Life and I wanna welcome you to a life change. Tell them where you from, M.I.A. The city is mine, there's no escaping these lights. Come on and tell them where you from, M.I.A. The city is mine, there's no escaping these lights. Come on and tell them where you from, Come on and tell them where you from, M.I.A. On my feet, it, 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 man, I love my city, city, man, I love my city. My uncle was a big drug dealer in the state of Texas, in Dallas, Texas. My mom and dad were with them, and they would move around a lot of different places. Around the age of four years old, my mom kind of said that she don't, she no longer wanted me to, um, wanted me to be in that lifestyle. Wanted, she didn't want to be in that lifestyle as well, so she moved to Miami. When she moved to Miami, I kind of grew up in a, in a neighborhood where there was a lot of gangs, and at the age of eight years old, I joined my first gang. Um, got in trouble with the law, got arrested at the age of eight. By the time I was 16, I had already been in jail nine different times. and I was smoking, drinking, doing everything that you can imagine. Um, at the age of 16, after being in jail for so long, I had an encounter with God, but I didn't know who God was. I just had an encounter with him. I remember opening up the Bible. and um, I remember this old man that used to come to Juvenile Hall every Sunday, and he used to bring cookies and sodas. And um, I remember he, he would always talk about Jesus, but I didn't care about Jesus. I cared about the cookies and the soda. But at that point, at 16 years old, something happened to me so deep that I was like, man, you know what? I need to find more about this God. But I, I tried to do it on my own. I didn't look for a church home. I, I kind of wanted to do it by myself. So I ended up, you know, I'm only going to smoke weed. I'm not going to snort or drink anymore. I'm only going to have sex if I really like the girl, if I really think that, you know, that I love her. And um, by the time I was 19, I, I kept stumbling back and forth with God and doing whatever I want. Never Jesus. And when I was 19, I got, a, uh, I got arrested for attempted murder and armed robbery. And um, I faced the judge, and the judge told me he offered me 90 years. Prosecutor offered me 90 years. Um, I remember going back to my dorm and getting on the bunk. Clear as day, I remember crying up under the sheets like, man, I, I really need to do something to change my life because this is it's over. That was at the point in my life where I said, I don't care if I, if I get time, I, I think my life needs to change. And I remember there were some brothers that were meeting in the back of the cell, Metro West, Miami, Florida. And I went back there with them. Um, they introduced me to the gospel. Over the next few months, man, I ended up coming to know who Jesus was, the Jesus of the Bible. I uh, finally opened the Bible up in Matthew and began to read the New Testament. It blew me away. I never really understood what Christianity was. I knew what God was. But my whole life, I grew up in witchcraft. That's all my mom ever showed me. That's all I ever knew. So for me to find Jesus in the midst of that, it was like, wow. And um, that's how I came to the Lord, pretty much in one of the worst situations of my life. I got sentenced to five years, but in those five years, I just grew in the Lord. It was like a big old Bible study. I was released from prison in 2004, in November. Um, I ended up going to a church. I had a friend of mine that he was, he was attending this certain church. And... Um, I told them when I get out, I'll visit. That's where I ended up meeting my wife. Um, we, we were friends a year and a half. We, we never even spoke about anything like that. She actually, she was in a relationship and um, that ended up not working out. Eight, nine months later, I was sitting at her house, Hurricane Wilma in Miami. I remember just looking at her, we were in the house, man. And I was like, well, and I was like, nah, that can't be it. And then I thought about it and prayed about it. And you know, that was October, 25th 
and um we were married april 7th so it was literally like october november december january february march april may april six months later we were actually married so it was pretty cool um one thing that she's always telling me man and, and i saw it in our relationship um she said run run as hard as you can towards god run as hard as you can toward god grind serve do whatever it is that you can to run as hard as you can if you look to the left or to the right and there's a girl and she's running just as hard as you are she's not running too fast where you gotta speed up to catch up to her and she's not running too slow where you gotta slow down to catch up to her but she's running just as hard as you are when you look over that's your wife you'll know he who finds a wife finds a good thing that doesn't mean go look for it that means like find when you like come out of your car and you find them five dollars on the on the floor and you grab the five dollars and you're like bless the lamb hallelujah that's what it means by fine. And I found a good thing. Bless God. We have two beautiful children, Ramses and Levi. If you see them, they look like little Jewish children because they're white and they're blonde. <sighs> I'm still praying for discernment. I'm not, but um, I, they're my kids. My mom is white, extremely white. And then I have blonde family. My mom has green eyes, but um, paper bag skin complexion tone stuff I don't even know what you call it like I'm brown like it's like a slight shade of brown and my kids are they're Jewish but I love them I love my kids February 2002 I got sent um to my permanent camp I was on the bunk reading one of my um reading my bible and a friend of mine Merlin Howard came up to me they didn't know him from a can of paint. The kid was just talking to me, you know, I see you reading your Bible, I'm a Christian as well. Then he asked me, do you do music? And I was like, nah, I don't do music. I have some poems and stuff that I've written, but I've never really, um, I've never done any music before in my life. And um, he stayed persistent. He was like, man, you could do it, it's easy. And that same Sunday, which we had service in prison, they had a song that they were working on or whatnot. It was like a hook. And he was like, man, why don't you try to write a verse to this? I was like, write a verse to what? All I do is poems. And man, I remember I started writing a verse to it. And that very same day, man, I recorded my first one. My, well, not recorded, but we performed our first, my first hip hop song. The next few months after that, um, Petty D's church, which is a, a church in, in Jacksonville called the Potter's House, which he was at the time. And a good friend of him's name, Tomcat. They introduced me to Christian music and gave me tons of CDs of gospel gangsters, of uh, T-Bone, of all type of stuff. And while I was in prison, I was listening to this stuff and I was like, man, I think I could do this. And I remember listening to Petty and I was like, man, he sound hood. He sound, that's how I talk. That's how I, that's how, that's the music I like. And man, they gave me 24 instrumental tracks from New Wine. That's how, way back away, from New Wine. And I literally started recording it while I was inside the, inside the chapel in jail. I remember grabbing the microphone and recording it into a tape and then I would get it to another tape and I would put it to another one and I would do my ad-libs. Never recorded a day in my life, but I sat there while everybody was playing music and out there watching movies in the chapel and playing sports. I was in there and I recorded 22 songs. Two of the beats were horrible, so I didn't do it. But 22 songs and man, it was just, that's how everything started, pretty much. The last four years, um, I've kind of been plotting on Luna and thinking about it. Luna was an album that was probably gonna be the name. I, I got it right after Home, which was my, my initial, my first album. Right after it, God had gave me that Luna, which I remember um, remember thinking, man, the, the moon is a reflection of the sun. It's crazy how much we're a reflection of the sun or how our life is supposed to be a reflection of the sun. So I began to think on it, plot on it. A lot of things changed in my life. I was no longer that rapper that was traveling and. You know, my wife and I, we, we lived full time off the ministry, off of going to churches and preaching, going to churches and rapping. But I transitioned from that. I ended up going to Trinity Church. I ended up becoming a full time student at Peacemakers Leadership College, Biblical Theology. So I, I started focusing on that. I was a part of a youth group that was thriving, an amazing young adults group, the Rendezvous. Um, I was plugged into the church in Big Picture on Sunday mornings. And, so many things were coming into my life. I, I ended up getting on staff over there. And so many things changed that it, it, it kind of stretched out the process of recording an album. And I found myself in a place where I started thinking a little bit more about it. So the concept Lunar really started embodying, it was me, it was my life. I was showing a reflection. The music was showing in four years, 
I was writing down every single season of my life and you can see it in the music. And that's one of the best things, the best quality that I love about the album, sitting there and listening to it right now. You, you see the, the changes and how God did things. And even from home to Luna, you can see how many things God did, how many different things God has done. So Luna came from that, just a reflection of my life. It's really just like, it's an open book, just a testimony. I think one of the greatest reasons that um, young men and women, as well as older men and women, I think one of the reasons why we why we kind of get on the fence and we kind of get confused and sometimes you fall off, whether you're in the church or not in the church, I think one of the greatest reasons that happens is the lack of purpose. People think that they don't have purpose, that there's no, there's nothing for them to do on this earth. They're just meant to take up a seat and just be there. But that can, that's, that's not true at all. I think all of us have a purpose. I think all of us have a reason that we're existing and God wants that to do. You don't know what your purpose is. Get into a church, a local church and begin to serve. All of us can pick up a broom and we pretty much know how to clean. We all know how to stack a chair, put something together. Get into a local church and just begin to serve. In the middle of that, you'll begin to find your purpose. It's just like the story where God, what Jesus was talking about. He gave the talent to one, and he gave two, and then he gave five. And how they went and they multiplied them and they got doubled. They didn't have all those talents at the beginning. If we, if we move it into purpose, they didn't have those. But the more that they went to invest them, the more that they did it, the one guy that buried it in the ground, if you could take that as an analogy, all of us have a talent and that's serving. All of us can serve at a local church. All of us can serve. All of us can pick up a broom. We can pick up a chair. We can do so many different things. From that, God will begin to stem so many other things that in turn become your purpose. It becomes your call. That keeps you off the fence.